It's Sunday, February the 9th, and I want to talk about feeding protein pellets to white-tailed deer. That's a big part of the program here on the farm, and I think a very valuable program, but uh, uh, there's pros and cons to it, and I think it's worth having a discussion. Now, let's talk about the cons first. A. It's very expensive. To effectively feed a herd of white-tailed deer, it's expensive and you just need to know that going in. Now, if you want to put a feeder out, feed a few deer just for your own uh, fun and enjoyment, that's fine. But to really impact a herd of deer, you have to have a, a fairly extensive program. Here on the farm, we have a feeder per every 60 acres. Um, there have been studies in the South Texas that showed that uh, uh, benefits continued to accrue, accrue all the way up to a feeder per hundred acres. So some density of feeders is critical. Obviously, again, that's expensive. The other thing about feeding protein is I think that it's, uh, it fills the top hole in the bucket. Really, I don't think you should consider a protein program until you have all the other factors in place. You've got herd management in place. You've got age structure in place. You've got your food plots in place. You've got timber in place. Now, if you'll look right over here, you'll see uh, 22 acres that's divided into two different fields. Uh, these fields are planted in small grains and uh, uh, crimson clover, radishes, turnips, and this particular field right here I'll convert to a summer annual field with soybeans, cowpeas, uh, sun hemp, uh, buckwheat, sunflowers, and, and maybe one or two other things. I think I'm going to throw some okra in there this year. So this 11 acres will convert to a, a summer annual field, and the other 11 acres back there also has durana clover in it, so it'll be growing durana while this transitions. So 365 days a year for all practical purposes, there's something growing out in that field that's good for the deer. By the same token, if you'll look over here, the, there's some timber that I thinned out two years ago. Uh, it creates an incredibly lush uh, salad garden for deer um, and uh, very valuable. I did about 100 acres here and as I've mentioned in other videos, I do about 100 acres a year. So let's go back to protein supplementation. Why do we do it? Well, from February to August we feed protein. And the benefits from our experience are, is it increases body weight, it increases fawn reproduction. I mean, the does are, are pregnant, as I mentioned earlier now, so they're on a very high nutritional requirement uh, right now. The bucks, they've just shed their antlers, and within a couple of weeks, they're going to start growing the new antlers, and I want to do everything I can to, to jumpstart that process. Uh, in fact, uh, maybe to show off a little bit. I happened to find this bad boy uh, just a couple of days ago. In fact, I found this one today and I found this one two days ago. Same buck found here and not, uh, not very far from here. Well, that's a 187, 188 inch uh, whitetail right there. I want every day of this deer's life to be 100% nutrition. I don't want him to uh, be compromised in the least for a single day. And um, that's how they get to be this big and it makes you wonder What's he going to do with another year? So, as we all know, whitetails are, are selective browsers. And the conventional wisdom is they know what's best for them. They'll go through the, through the woods and they'll select the, the crops or the plants or the forbs or the briars or whatever it is that uh, they need that particular time that's most nutritious for them. Believing that that's true, we started protein in this feeder right here three days ago, and within 24 hours, deer were already feeding out of it. What does that tell you? Tells you they like it. Tells you it's good for them. Tells you it makes them feel good. Even with that field, even with the forest there, they come and eat the protein. What typically happens is the deer come drifting out of the woods, they'll come up to the protein feeder, they'll eat a little while, they'll then drift into the fields and eat there. It's February, the bleakest month of the year in Louisiana, and I suspect the bleakest month of the year in most parts of the country. That's why we start the protein now. So we'll go through fawns, or, or does being pregnant, to fawns being born, to fawns nursing, to fawns being weaned. We'll go through the entire growth cycle of uh, antler growth. Let's talk about the pellets themselves somewhat. 
Now, these pellets, you can see here, uh, I don't know, let's get the camera on them. It's just a pelleted ration. Um, I'll never get sponsors because this particular ration I developed myself and it's a no-name protein. But for most people, you can buy the brand name proteins. Uh, Purina makes a good pellet. Uh, Antler King makes a good pellet. In the South, uh, Lysian Eccles makes a great pellet. Record Rack makes a great pellet. All the manufacturers really essentially make uh, the same pellet where cost is the driving factor. So I think any one that you would happen to select would be fine. The key is you want it out every day. The other key to feeding protein is the feeder itself. I like this particular kind of feeder, although I have several different kinds, and I'm not endorsing any particular specific kind of feeder, but I can tell you some elements that are extremely important. One, you saw me putting protein in this without having to stand on a ladder or pull up by it with a truck. I could pour it right in. That's pretty darn handy. The second thing is, and this is critically important, up underneath here on both sides is a cavity so that coons, possums, uh, squirrels, all the things that like to eat your protein, they can't crawl up it. They get to here, they can't crawl up. Now, sometimes you will find coons that are big enough that can do a chin-up on this right here. Well, they get right here and can do a chin-up. If that's the case, you can simply set these protein feeders up on a block and get them that much higher. Problem solved. So what does protein do? Let's go back to that a little bit. I've talked to some of the benefits, but I'm going to give you an anecdotal experience from myself. I've been feeding here on the farm for over 20 years, maybe closer to 30 years. It's my impression that a couple of things happen. One, um, I think that it increases antler growth on top of all of the other elements that I have going here. I think it increases antler growth 10 to 15 percent. Take that buck right there at 185, add 10 percent to that. Pretty exciting. And then the second thing you get is something called the epigenetic response. As all the deer in this area start to become uh, imprinted to feed on protein, to eat protein, it becomes a regular part of their diet. The mamas teach the fawns, the fawns grow up on it. And what happens over time is the entire bell curve of quality of deer starts to improve. Um, that's called the epigenetic response. The gen genes within humans, within deer, within anything else, will respond to the environment, positive or negative. So if you can do enough to raise the nutritional profile on your property, then over time, generationally, you'll start to see the entire herd improve. You couple that with letting deer get into the older age classes and it becomes extremely powerful. So I'm a big fan of feeding protein. Uh, even in an environment where they have everything they could possibly need in the habitat, there's no doubt in my mind that a protein program can add value um, and it's uh, something that I'm very committed to here on the farm. Now, one last comment and that is why do we just feed from February to August? Well, what we find is about September when the acorns start dropping, it's game over. The deer will, you can't get them to eat out of the feeders anymore. So acorns start coming on in September. By October, they're in full production. The woods, predominantly the woods here on this farm in Louisiana are oak trees. We rarely if ever have a, a acorn failure. So um, once they start falling, the deer pull off of the, they pull off the food plots, they pull off the feeders and eat the acorns. So I simply don't waste the money. Uh, so from October till about January or February, I don't feed. But as I mentioned earlier, February in Louisiana is a very lean month all in all. And uh, I think that uh, the deer like to come here, get an easy meal before they move on through the fields. Protein supplementation, very powerful. One thing you may want to think about adding to your program. Hope this is helpful. Before I end this video, I will go back and talk about the pellets themselves one more time because it, it is very important. As I mentioned earlier, all the major manufacturers make a quality uh, a protein pellet and most of them are in the 18% protein range. That's what this is right here. We have an 18% uh, protein um, pellet. The key things in a, in a pelleted ration are 
the percent protein and you want a minimum of 16 percent and probably a maximum of 20 percent you can get too hot on the protein and it will uh, start to have a negative impact on the gut floor of the deer so uh, 16 to 20 percent we settle on about 18 percent uh, in our pellets uh, the other thing you want is a fat uh, fiber ratio. Fiber is very important for deer just like it is for for uh, humans and and the fat content is is valuable as well so um, you want that fat fiber ratio to be to be uh, meaningful and fiber and I forget the exact numbers but I think you want the fiber a minimum of six percent and fat whatever you want to put in it the more fat the more they're going to eat also this particular pellet has molasses in it which makes it attractive to eat the other thing we add to our pellets, uh, which aren't in most pellets, as I said, most manufacturers are constrained by cost. The one thing that we add to our, uh, one of several of the things that we add to our pellets that aren't in many of the manufacturers are, we add some essential oils uh, that uh, act as a, a natural antibiotic. They clean the deer out, they help with uh, parasite infections, um, uh, cinnamon oil, there's some clove oil in there uh, that actually will help, some of the things actually help ticks. Uh, to keep ticks from the deer. Uh, so you can add things like essential oils and prebiotics and probiotics that do uh, make the pellet somewhat better. It's not essential, but uh, it does increase the cost, but it does help. And I suppose that's why I'll, I'll probably never get sponsors for anything because you can see our uh, bag does not have the picture of a big deer on it, so there's no marketing here. Uh, there's, uh, I'm not endorsing one protein pellet over the other. I think what's far more important than the pellet you feed is that you do feed. So uh, good luck with your protein feeding program.